Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to part three of three lessons about civil liberties. My name is Ms. Jennifer Blank, and I will be your guide on this journey. Let's go over a couple of key ideas and some key vocab that we're going to discuss in this lesson. We're going to talk about the USA Patriot Act of 2001. We're going to talk about the FISA courts and the Foreign Intelligence and Surveillance Act that created those courts. We're going to talk about the Alien and Sedition Acts of 1798 the Habeas Corpus Act of 1863, the Espionage Act of 1917, the Sedition Act of 1918, executive orders of President Roosevelt during World War II, and the Pentagon Papers. This lesson will focus on national security versus privacy rights. So here we go. All right, let, let's go into a historical breakdown of the various times in, in American history that the government has interfered with our quintessential basic natural rights. Okay, uh, the Alien and Sedition Acts of 1798 were passed by uh, or under uh, President John Adams, the second, president's, uh, the second president of the United States. The U.S. was in a quasi-war, an undeclared war with France at the time, and uh, these laws made it a crime to criticize the government. The Alien Acts actually revoked pre-existing citizenship to attempt to ensure that John Adams would win re-election. Under the Sedition Acts, 24 people were arrested and 10 were convicted. Uh, the law then expired in 1801. So this is early in our history, an example of our government attempting to take away some of our fundamental natural rights. During the Civil War, President Lincoln, uh, under his leadership, the Habeas Corpus Act of 1863 was passed. And this, and Habeas Corpus was suspended in the name of national security. President Lincoln was so worried about uh, the, the, the health and the future of the nation that he suspended habeas corpus. Uh, basically, habeas corpus is that a person accused must be brought to a public court. Okay, you can't just hide them out in a hole somewhere and not have them answer for their crimes. They have to be made aware of their charges and be brought to trial in a public court. The Supreme Court declared that act unconstitutional and said the president was overreaching his authority and the Congress did not have the authority to give him this ability. In 1917 uh, is when we jumped into World War I, the United States, that is. Uh, First Amendment freedoms were suspended uh, due to a national emergency, that being World War I. Uh, it was designed to protect the United States from foreign spies. Uh, a little bit later, in 1918, this was the, the, the Sedition Act amended the Espionage Act, and it specifically targeted those interfering with the draft and draft procedures and those who publicly criticized the government. More than 2,000 people were prosecuted under this act. Now, World War II doesn't exactly stop, you know, because in national security in times of crisis, uh, the American people seem to be okay with suspension of some of these rights. There were two very important executive orders that President Roosevelt signed. Uh, 9066, which designated military areas um, by the U.S. where they could hold military enemies and have complete control. And uh, Executive Order 9102, Japanese Americans were rounded up, their property and wealth and any all their possessions confiscated, and they were detained in camp for the duration of the war. Now, this doesn't just mean Japanese immigrants. These are in some cases, or were in some cases, second and third generation born Japanese descent, but they were American citizens through and through. And just because of their ancestry, they were locked up in the name of national security. During the Vietnam War era, uh, one government analyst uh, it illegally copied 7,000 pages worth of government documents containing damaging information uh, about government conduct during the Vietnam War. This gentleman, Daniel Ellsberg, uh, uh, was a, a, a lightning rod. Uh, many people liked what he did and thought it was a right, the right thing. Others uh, called him a traitor and said that uh, what he did was treason by releasing classified information. Now, th this became New York Times versus the United States, the government lost its case, and the Supreme uh, and the Supreme Court said, no, 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 you do not have the right to withhold this information from the American people, and the papers were printed in several different newspapers. This brings us to uh, a sad, sad day in our history, one some of you uh, probably don't even remember, but it was September 11th, 2001, and in front of you, you see uh, the New York City skyline as it was before the terrorist attacks. And I want you to pay particular attention to the Twin Towers here. They stand uh, unharmed, uh, uh, high above, towering high above all of the buildings in the city. And uh, on that day, on that Tuesday, many things changed. Two planes hit the World Trade Center uh, and, and caused them to collapse in a terrorist attack that included not just New York City, but also the crash of Flight 93 in Pennsylvania and the crash of a plane into the United States Pentagon in Washington, D.C. And you can see the skyline changing, the smoke flying uh, from, from the towers. And here you see uh, fire, the explosion from when the plane hit. 
and uh, further explosions, the towers collapsing, which sent a cloud of dust throughout the entire city. People running, trying to get away from the dust. To this day, there are people dealing with health problems, and so many have died just from what they inhaled and what they came into contact with, the materials they came into contact with on that day. Kids lost their parents. People lost their children. They lost their family members, their friends, their, their spouses. Uh, and we were angry. We were exceedingly angry. We wanted blood. Uh, I can't lie, myself included. I, I was 20, 21 at the time, and I, I, I was mad. I was so irate. I just wanted blood. I wanted to go get them. And our president and our Congress did attempt to go get them with this. Uh, this is where we get into the privacy rights versus security issues. Now, when an, a crisis like that occurs, people are scared. They're petrified and they want they want revenge, but they also want to know that it's going to be OK, that we're safe, that we're going to be safe, that we're going to fix the problems and something like that is never going to happen again. So 45 days after 9-11, the USA Patriot Act was passed. It increased the power and size of the federal bureaucracy dramatically and gave unprecedented powers, uh, almost powers in perpetuity to the president and the bureaucracy. We'll talk about those powers on the next slide. But I will say that the federal government was partially regulated by FISA courts. Now, what are those things? Uh, this was the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, um, and this act was passed in 1978. And according to this, the president has to petition for a warrant from seven special judges that are selected by the chief justice uh, in order to legally engage in surveillance of folks. They need to go and put forth what evidence they have and get approval from these seven special judges. The president can get around this court in special circumstances, but he still has to go to the court afterwards and report what he finds to justify uh, what, what was done. Probable cause does not apply for FISA warrants. So if they have uh, reasonable evidence that you might be engaged in, um, in, in espionage, then they can just go get you. Uh, but the typical probable, probable cause, that burden that is applicable to other criminal cases does not apply for FISA warrants. It's a much lower burden. So USA Patriot Act. Uh, this was a, a graphic completed by the ACLU, the American Civil Liberty, Liberties Union. It's a, um, a civil rights and, and civil liberties uh, interest group. Uh, probably, I would argue, focused more on civil rights as opposed to civil liberties, but uh, it does focus on that as well. Um, and it ha this is a graphic that was put out uh, at, after the Patriot Act was passed to warn people about the dangers of it. So here's a... Um, a political cartoon regarding electronic surveillance of possible terrorists. You see two guys staring at a computer and a one guy is saying, no, I'm not backing up our files. I'm just assuming that the FBI is making copies. So you don't need to back up your files because if you lose them, you just call the FBI and they can update your files since they're downloading all of them anyway. Uh, so it's kind of a, a joke about the level of surveillance that's happening in the United States. So. Is it Big Brother? Is it against the Constitution? Or is it a valid and necessary tool against terrorism? Let me uh, magnify this graphic just a little bit. So Congress passed the, universal, the controversial United States of America Patriot Act in the wake of the deadly 9-11 terrorist attacks on New York City and Washington, D.C. President George W. Bush and supporters called it a necessary tool to fight terrorists. Critics have claimed it goes too far and violates the basic constitutional rights of Americans. What does the act say? The Patriot Act gives the government unprecedented powers to detain or investigate anyone it suspects is a terrorist or supports terrorist activities. It allows the government to access email, voicemail, and records of internet activity without a warrant, greatly expand secret searches of private premises without a warrant, search private premises unannounced with a warrant even in non-terrorism cases, gain access to bank, library, educational, and other personal records. As modified in 2006, a court order is needed to require libraries to yield the names of book borrowers. Enforce stricter standards for issuing visas to foreigners seeking to enter the United States. Remove the statute of limitations, the legal time limit, on prosecuting terrorist crimes that result in murder. Detain indefinitely non-citizens suspected of terrorism. Some communities passed resolutions in support of civil liberties and against the Patriot Act, urging local law enforcement to refuse requests from federal authorities under the Patriot Act. Most provisions of the act were made permanent in 2006. Now, this is something we really need to think about. We're going to debate this issue in class. We're going to discuss it. There have been other acts passed since that have strengthened some of these uh, provisions. 
and expanded some of them as well. And we're going to debate the merits of this, whether or not it's worth it, uh, how our founders might have thought of it, and what we think of it, and why we like it, why we don't like it, why we agree with it, why we do. So we're going to debate this and discuss this in great detail in class because it's a very, very important issue, the issue of how far can the government go to defend us, to protect us? Uh, how far is too far? At what point do we stop uh, protecting what we we are trying to protect and start destroying it from within? And th th these are important questions we need to ask ourselves as Americans, and they are on, it's an ongoing conversation that needs to continue to happen. So, key laws that affected civil liberties. Uh, uh, this is going to wrap up our lesson. We have the Alien Sedition Acts, which we talked about, the Habeas Corpus Act, Espionage and Sedition Acts. There's the Smith Act of 1940, the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, the Flag Protection Act of 1989. That was ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Basically, it attempted, the, this Flag Protection Act attempted to prevent people from damaging or uh, vandalizing the American flag. <clears throat> There was the Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993. Uh, there is a link there if you go to my website and download the actual PowerPoint presentation. You can go ahead and click on that link. It's basically a, a breakdown of what the Act of 1993 stated. And the Child Pornography Prevention Act of 1996, which was ruled unconstitutional. Communications Decency Act of 96, ruled unconstitutional. The Child Online Protection Act of 1998, also ruled unconstitutional. We talked about the, mil the, the Patriot Act of 2001, Military Tribunals Act of 2006, we will talk about in class. I hope you learned what you need to. I hope this sparks some thinking about how far our government can or should go in protecting and defending the territories of the United States. I hope you learned what you needed to, and I will see you soon for civil rights.